Well, there's the bell. Good evening, everybody. We're glad you're here. I tell you what, we are uh, excited about tonight. It's kind of warm down here in the ring, but you're pretty cool up there ever, everywhere else. And so we never know how it is. Usually, the lower you go, the cooler it gets. Uh, but we get the heat coming in from the back, I guess. But uh, anyway, we're, we're, we're glad you're here with us. What a blessing it is. Well, let me ask you a question. Are you expecting... Amen. Well, if you're expecting, God will meet you right where you're at. I believe that every time. And so we're going to open with a word of prayer. If uh, Willie's going to open with us or for us. Yeah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just welcome you in this place with us here tonight, Lord. We just thank you. We consecrate this time for you, Lord. Lord, we pray an anointing over Pastor Kelly as, as he delivers the word that you stirred in his heart. And Lord, I pray that each person that hears it receives it and carries it outside the four walls of the church. Yes. Lord, may everybody leave here with your light shining through them to light the paths of the darkness. We give you the praise and glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, I tell you what, we've been, uh, I, I got, most of you know, I've been on, uh, was on vacation, and of course I was la back here last week, but I went 10 days without playing, so if I ain't perfect tonight, that's my excuse. <clears throat> of course, you all know it doesn't matter if I'm playing every day, I'm not perfect. But I tell you what, uh, we have a lot of fun. But, you know, there's a few songs that just stand out in my mind as, as great old hymns. And uh, there's power in the blood. You know, one, I, I've hear, I hear of churches. Now, I don't know of any. But I hear of churches that don't even talk about the blood of Jesus anymore. I can't imagine how in the world you would go through the Bible and not talk about the blood of Jesus. But the blood of Jesus is the thing that gives us uh, the sacrificial price paid. And because of it, we, we can be uh, called children of God. We can walk in righteousness. And so what a blessing this is. So, Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. that last chord 
All right. Well, I tell you what, we love to do some uh, of the just good old uh, fiddle tunes, and Angelina Baker is a good one, and so we're going to let Rick show us how to play. We tried one earlier. I'm going to bail on it. We're going to get it for next week. We're going to get Hallelujah side for next week. But we're going we're gonna to do Are You Washed in the Blood. We just decided we'd do two of these on the, about the blood tonight. And this is another one that just is uh, just an old classic that I believe is uh, one of our favorites. So. Stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. 
Well, my question to you is, are you washed in the blood? I believe if you made Jesus Lord, you are. And so we're going to take just a second to make a few announcements, and we'll switch out here. We'll switch mics. All right. Well, we are uh, glad you're here, as always. Uh, we're thankful for everybody who comes out. You know, there's a lot that goes into getting all this done. And, and uh, man, I tell you what, I have a group of men that usually... Uh, it's a pretty consistent group of men that help set all this up. We have a, a men's Bible study that meets every Tuesday morning up here. Mike Woods, wave Mike. Yeah, Mike Woods teaches that. I, I just uh, are, am there most of the time to just kind of fill in. Everybody kind of, a lot of guys share, and it's just a great time. The guys go out and eat uh, afterwards. I usually am practicing here or running to get something else done, and I don't always go to breakfast at Boomerang, but they invade Boomerang afterwards, so there's a bunch of old bunch of old uh, codgers go in there and give everybody a hard time into uh, into and the gals in there at uh, in boomerang but they go in there afterwards but we set all this up and it takes quite a few trips to to carry everything down and you know there's a there's a, a smaller group that helps carry it all up afterwards and so if you're able to and you'd like to help just a little bit and serve you know, carrying these little things up. We've got a little place we put them, but uh, it's nothing real big and heavy except for this and that. But uh, the rest of it's pretty simple. We've got a pretty good routine of doing it. We've got guys that take care of the sound equipment and the camera. But this stuff, if uh, anybody wants to stay after and help, any more people want to stay after and help, it doesn't take long. We've got lots of help. So it's always a, a blessing to have those that will do that. Uh, but I just I just want to thank you guys that uh, ought to make you stand, you guys that are here that help. But uh, I won't do that. But we sure thank all of you who, who are a part, guys and gals afterwards. Some of the ladies actually help. So it's always a blessing. I want to thank Dakota and Chris Davis for letting us use this facility, so let's give them a hand. <clears throat> uh, they have uh, taken this over over the last, I think, about three, about four years and uh, uh, continued to allow this uh, to, to, to uh, operate here, and we're blessed for that. Uh, one other announcement, we've got uh, music and ice cream uh, at Carrier Church. I don't know if it's up there. Yeah, right there. The Bowen family, you know, uh, Bobby Bowen and his family that come here uh, once in a while, a few times, Nashville quality, great people, great ministers. They're going to come to church, our church uh, up there at Carrier, uh, where I pastor on Sunday mornings. And uh, But it, the, for the evening service, I know a lot of you go to church somewhere on, on Sunday morning, but that evening, we're going to have homemade ice cream and just kind of make and uh, uh, do it all inside, but but have a, a fellowship there and let them uh, just do a bunch of music. So mark your calendars. That'll be a, a not this Sunday, but the following Sunday after that on the 20th. And so uh, make sure and, and uh, if you'd like, come out on that Sunday evening. All right. Only other thing, we got offering buckets around. They're right here uh, at each entrance if you want to give and sow into the kingdom of God. I believe, you know, I am excited every time I, I think about an offering. You know, some people don't get excited about an offering. Some people go, oh, man, I you know, was head down. It's like I don't want to I, I don't want to hear anything. But if we really understand what God promises about our finances, that is our entrance into the connection with God and, and how he's going to provide for our needs. He said, well, I do pretty good on my own, but think how much better you could do if you did it with God's work and help. I tell you what, I, I know most of you, I'm talking to the choir here, most of you are givers and most of you understand this. But you know, one of the things I, I watched my wife and I uh, decide to do this as just kids without hardly any money, but we determined we were going to give and sow and tithe and be obedient to God and trust Him. And I can tell you, month after month, year after year, week after week, day after day, God God's provision has always been seen because of that. And so uh, when you give, and the only reason I talk about all that is so that when you give, you don't just give because you give with purpose. And as you give, your, your purpose is to honor God, to demonstrate your trust in Him, and then set your expectation for God to do something great so that you have more to give and give again. So I, when I pray over your offering, that's the way I pray is that God's going to bless and provide. So let's go before the Lord and let's pray over this offering. Father, we just come before you tonight. and Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to gather. We thank you that we're, we're free in this nation with all its madness with all those things that are going on, Lord, we still have that freedom, and, and Lord, we don't take it lightly. 
We value the fact that we can come into your presence, that we can come into with a group of people and meet and not worry about a threat. But Father, I thank you and I praise you that we don't, we don't take it lightly that we're also coming into your presence. And as we do, that Lord, when we are giving, we want to give in faith. When we're praying, we want to pray in faith. When we open your word, we want to open it in faith. When we come in and fellowship, we want to do it with, with honoring you and bringing you at the forefront. And so, Father, as we bring this offering tonight, as, we, as people give and they sow their seed, we thank you, Father God, that, that your abundant provision is, is on it. The Lord is blessed, and, it, and the return will be evident. Father, I pray and I, I ask that you just help to quicken to everyone's heart to see the different ways that you provide, that we'd have an attitude of expectancy and that, that we'd see every blessing, everything that flips right to our favor, everything that, that happens to prevent us loss. That's all because of your blessing. And so, Lord God, we just come before you as we, as we sow this seed tonight, as we give. Uh, we thank you, Father God, that it'll be, it'll be blessed back to us for abundance. Not so that we just are at ease and wealthy, but, Father, that we can be givers again. So that we can never be without the ability to do that good work that you called us to do. We thank you, Father God, for it. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Well, I tell you what, we're blessed with musical talent here. Uh, we thank God for uh, mom, my mom and Martha. They're going to come and sing us a couple of worship songs and con uh, connect us with God in another way. We've already been there one way, but we're going to get there as well. Yes. And so we're, we're blessed. Give my mom, Pat Cronkite, and Martha Counts a hand. Is this on? Hi, guys. All right. Well, the Lord's given me three songs for us to do tonight, so I believe that we're going to be blessed to the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And I think we have the words, so you can sing with me. By the way, several people have asked if when we do this that we'd put the words up, so you have no excuse tonight. We have them. Okay? All right. Bless the Lord. feel better whenever you sing songs like that and just bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Because without him, who are we? We're not much, are we? Okay. Blessed assurance. And then we'll see. Okay, we do have the words. We, we'll see how she does with this one, okay? Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory. in his blood this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long perfect submission perfect delight visions of rapture
praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, washed in his blood. just tell you something that God has dealt with me about this next song that we're going to do. I want to do He Touched Me. For several days this song has been in my heart because the Lord has touched each and every one of us. And I believe that the Lord has instructed me tonight to ask you if you would stand with me as we sing this song. Would you do that for me? This is a confession. He has touched me. There's not a one in this room that hasn't been touched by the Lord. And it just as blesses me. When I think what the Lord has done in my life, can't you just stand there tonight and think what all the Lord has done for you, what he has done for you, what he's doing for you, and oh my, what he's going to do for us. And at the end, I just believe that rather than clap at the end, I want us to stay in an attitude of prayer as, as the man of God comes tonight to bring a word, because I believe that Kel has a special word for us tonight, and I believe as we have our hearts open to hear the word of God, it is the season, I do believe, that we need to hear from God for wisdom and for guidance and for, for direction. Shackled by Jesus. While you're standing there, I just want you to think about 
all the different ways that God's entered into your life, maybe different times. Let's just pray, Father. Father, we just come before you, Lord, and we thank you that you are a God who, who touches us. There's also examples throughout your word where Jesus was touched. But when that connection was made, something happened. I thank you, Father God, for the times that we know that we're at the end of ourselves, that we're the, at the end of what we can do. But the hand of God is there. Thank you, the Jesus. word of God is there. The presence of God is there. Father, I pray tonight that for those who maybe have never sensed or felt or known that presence, the Lord, tonight they're going to know. Tonight they're sensing, they're realizing that's God. Something happened, and now we know. Father, I just pray that through this word and through this whole service, that, Lord God, that you touch each and every life. That's our prayer every week. Touch it and, and, and reach every heart, every life. So, Father, we just give you praise and glory and honor for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can be seated. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, I appreciate Mom being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. She didn't know what I was teaching tonight. But uh, I'm, I'm teaching, a, a, I call this how to hear the Word of God or a word from God. Not the Word, but a word. I've been teaching for the last several weeks that I've, I've taught. I've called this the, the previous teaching, uh, the Word of God has power. And I talked about a rhema word, or I talked about the word rhema in the Greek, how it's a living word. It's something that comes alive to us. This being the logos, the whole of the thought of God, the heart of God, the, the complete work of God, or the complete word of God. But when it comes alive to us, and it speaks directly to us, it's like a lightning bolt, or, or I talk about it like I'm reading it sometimes, and the, the words just jump off the page. It's like they just want to, they, they grab hold of you, or maybe the, the preacher's preaching or a song, something, and it ministers to you, and all of a sudden you know, it's like that song says, something happened, and now I know. See, that's the, the, the way that I connect with God. That's the way I see God. I know God is real. You couldn't talk me out of it if you had all the scientific facts or whatever to try to prove, disprove the Bible. It's too late because I've already met the real God. And, and that's what I hunger for. That's what keeps me going all these years. That's what continues to drive me in ministry. It isn't because I need something else to do. <laughs> it isn't a job. It never has been. I've done it for nothing. I've done it for little. I've done it for decent. I mean, good pay, I suppose. I mean, I, I don't know what good pay is. I, I think it's good pay for the amount of time and all that. I don't, I don't want to dis... I'm not... I just don't want you to think that I make some big lavish salary for this, okay? I, I guess that's why I tempered that. <laughs> but you know, here's the thing. Our pursuit is, my pursuit is in God, but my pursuit is for me and my connection. But it's also so that I can bring that to you. I'm so excited every time I see God get a hold of somebody's heart and life and I see him transformed. You know, we don't see a whole lot of people raising their hand for salvation. I think that's because of several reasons. We're not doing things in a way that brings the unsaved in as much as we're a solid church that encourages believers to be fed and, and encouraged. But there's always those that come in and, and, and we see come in who are unchurched. That's been the, the call of God on my life ever since I started in ministry at age 25, you know, all these years or, or 24 all these years and all this time of ministry, it's been to reach those that the church isn't reaching. And, and I'm so thankful that some of y'all are regular church members and some of you are people who never went to church before. And we see that all the time. But here's what I want is I want us to learn to be able to hear from God that word like we talked about. Let's go to Matthew chapter 4. And we're going to use this same verse. I've titled this, How to, How to Hear a Word from God, because I wanted it to be a, a standalone message. I didn't want to extend out a, a, uh, a uh, 
series too long here at this church. I, I do that at Carrier on Sunday morning. In fact, if you want to know more about a, a personal prayer life, I'm starting a series on, on, on prayer that I believe will be impact, uh, have an impact on your prayer life if you want to grow in that. And if you're not able, if you've got a church and you're not able to be there, you can watch it. Uh, that We put them on Facebook there at Carrier. And they'll end up on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel with High Call uh, ministries. And so anyway, uh, but Matthew chapter four says, the, uh, says people or men, this is the new living translation. It uses the word people do not live or don't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Now that's Jesus speaking. I've said this three weeks in a row or four weeks in a row, but that word W O R D right there in the bottom line there, that word Come W R D in the Greek, he means Rhema or is Rhema, and it means a living word or a now word is the best way I know to, to, to define it. In fact, it's God speaking specifically into your life. It's a moment where God says, I, I, You're mine. I love you. I died for you. When, for salvation's sake, that's when that word came. But it also comes whenever we read a, another promise from God's word. I was, um, one of, one of the young men that, that was ministering for me, uh, he, he, uh, filled in for me and, and he shared, he said, there's 60, uh, he said 7,500 promises in the, in the, in the scripture. I've heard 6,500. I don't know. It'd be hard to count them all. There's a whole lot of promises for God's people in and through this scripture, this word. But you know what? The ones that are, what about the ones that are generally to the children of Israel or, or the Jews? Or what about the ones that were to the specific to the people of that day when Jesus walked the earth or right after that when, when they first established the church? How do those apply to us? See, we can take those literally into that time period and X ourselves out of them or we can read them so that they're speaking to us and applying them to today. How does it fit? And that's the way we got to read them. Those, those scriptures and understand not changing the meaning, but bringing them into now. The Apostle Paul even did that. He preached about Abram and how Abram became Abraham and how he became over in Romans chapter 4 where he became fully persuaded and, and then he had faith to believe and, and conceive and, and, and all of the things. So he brought the old into the new light in teaching them. So we do the same thing. But I want us to understand that, that when, we, when we feed on the Word of God, we're feeding on it to allow us to grow. But then there's those times when it just, the aha, the oh my, oh me, that's mine. And then we become convinced. And see, that's when faith rises in our heart so that we can't be talked out of that promise. That promise of provision. Do you know what sustained Sue and I? Through many, my wife, through many of raising our four kids, the challenges that we went through at different times, there were times when we had no clue how we were going to pay our bills. There were some times where we didn't know how we were going to, what, what, what was, how we were going to pay for that repair on that vehicle or maybe find that other car. Or maybe there was a time when, when, healing needed to happen. There was all these different things, but we went to the word of God and we heard God. And when we heard God, faith arose in our heart and we stood on it and there was a challenge. There was an opposition to it. It didn't come instantly. And a lot of times it came with, with a challenge. God promises he's going to provide. And yet it's like how? I talk about when, when we left our full-time church position over in Arkansas and we moved to, to Tulsa. Why we went to Tulsa, the most expensive place we could have gone in between here and where we were, instead of coming all the way back home, I don't know, but God knew. We were following the direction of God. There were several times we did things that people look at us and scratch their heads and go, why are you doing that? But we were following God. And I have no doubt in those times, we went to a place and we rented this uh, duplex, and we had three of our four kids were, were born. Uh, Kate had, or Kinsey hadn't been, or hadn't made it here yet. But the the other three, and 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 we go into this place, and and we got no job. I, I, I'm I'm you know called to preach, but there's like maybe one Sunday on the calendar. No place that was given any kind of offerings. I mean, we went to one place, we drove an hour and a half or two hours over there. We got over there, I preached the Sunday morning service. We got done, and, and I figured, you know, you normally you, you receive a, an offering, you get an offering, you know. So I got there, and then they said, well, let's ta we'll take you to lunch. We went, went to lunch. They gave us our offering, it was $37. 
I didn't even fill up my Suburban at the time. And then we got to the meal, and we figured, well, they're, they're going to buy our lunch at least. And they got up and left. <laughs> we got our four kids, and we're like, we would have, we wouldn't have eaten. We, we wouldn't have went out to eat. We would have ate, you know, went home and or went to the dollar menu at McDonald's or something. You know, here we got another, our $37 went to our lunch. But you know, here, what, here's the thing. You know what she and I did? We got in the car and we went home and we looked at one another and said, thank God he supplies all our need. Because we'd established it. Because when we were first starting out, we set the precedent that we're going to trust God. God had said he had promised and we'd seen him do it over and over. This was, this was 10 years into marriage. I don't know. We had a lot of experience, a lot of proof that God was going to supply. But we, we, it sustained us because it was a rhema word because it was, we were confident in it. We knew God had spoke. My God shall supply. I will supply your needs. I will take care of you. We didn't know how. Man, I mean, I was, we were looking through the one ads and nothing. Was, man, the jobs were like, you know, God provided a sales job for a little while. And then that, that company went bankrupt and, and uh, or went, anyway, got into a legal deal and had to shut down. And then we're searching and we're seeking and we don't know how. But you know what? We never lacked food. I don't know where the money came from. I don't even know. Nobody brought us groceries, but we always had enough. We always filled the car up. We always made it. I don't know how, but God provided. Why? Because we stood on that word. When, when, when Kelsey went through uh, cancer and, and we were battling our oldest daughter, we were battling there. Man, we faced that. She was 20 years old. There's no reason she should have been going through what she was going through. We faced that, that fear, that battle, that overwhelming thing because we, we stood on God's word. My God shall supply. My God shall provide. My God shall heal. He'll give us wisdom. We didn't know what to do, but he gave us wisdom and direction. So there was over and over and over again that God continued to be at work. You see, I want you to understand something, that, that this reference to this man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It's not just every word from the Bible. It's every word that God speaks to us through the Bible. I want you to understand something. Anytime you, and, and just to qualify all this, anytime you hear a word from God out here, like, you know, you, you feel like God says, go do that. Or do what, it should never contradict the word of God. So if God's telling you to do something that is against the Word of God, that's obviously not God, okay? So that's a way to kind of balance and, and guard yourself. And in fact, I usually say, okay, God, if you're saying do that, show me something through the Word or give me confirmation through someone else. A allow someone who knows nothing about the situation to bring uh, some, some confidence there. But you know... Uh, this, this word, rhema, is a, and I defined it this way, it's a specific word to a specific person in a specific situation. You know, that, that's, that's, uh, that's how it will come. I, I, I know one time I was uh, losing cattle. Our first set of cows, we bought that first set of cows, and they're, they're, they're just, they're just you know, we lost calves. We lost a couple of cows. I mean, we didn't have very many. We're trying to figure, we're stressed out. It was no big deal compared to what I do now. It was 14 cows. I mean, I, I was worried. But I was 20, you know, 20 years old, 21 years old, and my wife is, it didn't bother me as bad as it did Sue. And when it bothered Sue, it bothered me because she was every day going, how are we going to pay for this? How are we going to do this? They're going to come get all our stuff. Well, I'm pretty sure the bank wasn't going to come repo everything for 14 cows, okay? Not knowing what I know now. But at the time, it was huge. And so we're going through all that. Well, God took me to Deuteronomy 28. And it says, He'll bless, if you hearken and obey the voice of the Lord your God to do all that He's commanded you to do, that He'll bless everything you'll set your hand to. But He says, I'll bless you in the field. I'll bless you in the city. I'll bless you coming. I'll bless you going. I'll bless the herds of your cattle and the offspring of, their, of, their, of your herds. It talks about sheep and stuff, but I didn't have any of those. All I needed was that, uh, that cattle deal. And you know what? Here's the thing. We took that, and I began to stand on that. And, and the next five calf crops, we didn't lose one calf. I remember that specifically because we sold that set of cows, and we moved, and we, we did some things different after that. But during that period of time, or four, I think four sets of calves after that, we never lost another calf. But because I went to, took that word of God, and I held on to that, and every time I drove through, my cows were mixed with, with mom and my stepdad's cows, and, and as they were mixed in with, you know, several hundred head, I, I'm, I'm, I see mine, though. You know, I knew all mine. I got them, my, my special ear tags, and I had my brand on them. But I went through, and I spoke blessing over them every time. 
I said what God said about that. You know, that's the way that works. God spoke that to me. I knew that was a promise. Let's look at Habakkuk. And I want us to look at this because how can we hear from God? You know, uh, this is, it's Mike's fault I'm going into this. Mike decided we're going to teach through Habakkuk in our men's Bible study. And this morning we got into this. And, and I want to use this as an example. Uh, I, I got Mike got to looking at, at my notes from preaching this before. Uh, and I thought, man, that's a, that's a great sermon. That's why I thought it was fitting that, that, we, that we're singing the songs that we sang tonight. Because I want us to understand how do we hear from God? How do we hear a word from God? Here in verse, uh, we're going to go to chapter 2. We're not going to read chapter 1. But chapter 1 is interesting because Habakkuk comes to at God with two questions. And he's asking why. And he's asking these questions. God gives him a, a, a response. And I don't want to take the time to teach through all that stuff. But... The one thing that, that Habakkuk did is he had the opportunity to either stay in the place of question or turn his heart to willing and ready to hear. You know, I, I could ask God sometimes. I could have many, many times over the years. I could have said, well, God, why am I having to go through this? I'm, I give my life to you. You know, I, I set aside my dreams and goals. I, I followed you. Why would I have to deal with this, that? I could be in a place of question. Or I could offer those questions to God, but then turn with a hearing ear. The first thing I want you to see on a way that we hear God is here in verse 1. He says, I will climb up on my watchtower and stand at my guard post. First of all, he says, I'm going to go where I can see. And this represents to me is Habakkuk was a prophet for, is, for Judah, actually, uh, this time Israel, if, you're, if you understand the Bible history, uh, Israel at times was bro broken into Israel and Judah. And, and so it was, it was broken into two different parts. And this was for Judah the, and at this time. And so they were separated. But he was, he's there s seeking God. And he says, I'm going to climb up on my watchtower and I'm going to stand my guard post. I'm going to do what I do. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. But he's, he's going to meet God. He's going to see and be in, be in a position to where he can see. So the first thing I want you to know is, is we've got to be willing to meet God. If we're going to hear God, you know, sometimes people live a life where they only God, go to God when they need something. Isn't it a whole lot more fun to have your kids or grandkids come to you just because they want to, not because they, they need something. You know, I could always tell when the girls, especially the girls, my three girls, they, they would come in, Dad, I love you, Dad. And, of course, they were playing a little bit because they knew I knew what they were needing was money or something. But they would come. But you know what? Isn't it a whole lot better when they just want to come hang out with you? That's why I love them when they're little. When they're little and they, you, you walk in the door, Daddy, you know, they come and they want to, or they just want to, you know, sit by you and all that stuff. That's all neat. They get a little older and it's not, not, quite, as much, not quite as much of that. <clears throat> Until they get real old and then when they get to be about 32, they'll take you on a trip and let you see Cheyenne Rodeo and all of that. That was pretty awesome. That was my oldest daughter. Now the two younger ones need to watch this, and they need to, you know, step it up. But uh, no, there's no pressure. That was a unique situation, and, and we'll, we'll do some trips together with all of them. But you know what? Here's the thing. He's, we, we've got to make a decision. We're going to meet God. That's what I'm teaching on, on Sunday morning, is how do we come into God's presence on a daily basis and develop a prayer life that's not rushed, that, that, that has the ability to, to both share uh, needs, but also receive a word. See, a lot of times we, we're not conditioned for that. We come in and we want to we wanna hurry instead of just meeting with God. There's something about that. The second thing is this, is that, that we need to look expectantly. Notice the rest of this verse. He says, there I will wait to see what the Lord says. So he says, I'm going to climb up on my watch. I'm going to meet with God or I'm going to be in a place where I can hear. But then I'm going to wait and see what the Lord says. You know, I don't know about you, but there's a lot of times I'm praying with the same pace that that everything else in my life is, which is in a hurry. I walk fast. I drive fast. I, 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 I move. Fast. I mean, you know, it's like I, I, I have this pace about me. And I got to learn to 
shut that down and slow that down. When I come into God's presence, and I'm going to tell you what, I'm way less, some of y'all think I might be wound a little tight. I'm not compared to what I it was when I was younger. My wife's saying amen. I'm much more relaxed. I, I, can, I can much more be at ease. And see, that is probably age has something to do with that. But it's also, it's also God. And I believe, here's this, is that as fast as we have to be in a lot of things in areas of our life, if we can learn to, to be at rest in God and meet Him, but also wait on Him, wait in His presence, not have to have anything back. You ever, you ever just you know, sit in, in silence or sit with, you know, some people have to have noise all the time. Uh, it's funny how, you know, it's like if it's quiet, they just can't stand them. So you got to have the TV on. You got to have the, the radio on. You got to, I know I'm, I'm punching some buttons because I see elbows flying and, and people looking at one another. And, <laughs> and, uh, and we got to have some, I, I said this one time, I said, I, I just like to drive around in my pickup with, with nothing on. Some of y'all get that, say nothing like the radio, no, no radio on. I said that one time in a sermon. And this one gal, she started busting up laughing. She's the only one that, that, that mine went there, I guess. But it's like, I'm at the radio. I want no noise. It was kind of funny. But, you know, here's the thing. There's a lot of times whenever I, I, I enjoy having no noise and having quiet. I enjoy being able to be quiet before the Lord. But you know what? Unless I'm willing to, to be able to sit back a little bit and get on God's, that what that does, it puts me on God's pace, and all of a sudden He can begin to speak, and I'm willing to listen. You know, here's something else, though. When, when we hear God like that or, and we see what He says, sometimes He doesn't talk a lot. Sometimes there's a, not a lot to it. Sometimes it's one little thing. Sometimes it's one word. Sometimes it's, I was uh, one young man that, that, that um, helps me some, and he was just talking about he was going before the Lord, just really struggling with some things, and, and he just heard God say, I, peace. Just peace. That's all he heard. When that word came, along with it came God's peace. And he knew what God meant in that word. It meant that I got you. I got everything handled. It's all going to be okay. So the second thing is that. The third thing is that, uh, first thing is we got to meet God. First, we got to look expectantly. And the third thing is we got to listen. In other words, we got to have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord would say. He says in the rest of that verse, how and how He will answer you. So I'm going to wait and see what He'll say and how He will answer my complaint. I want to wait and see how he'll answer me. See, a lot of times we, we pre-program what we want and desire, and we don't let God have the influence and make the, make the decision of how it's going to be. I say that, God, this is the one way that my prayer will be answered. This is the one thing that I'm, I'm going to do. We need to, we need to come in there with that attitude of waiting and seeing what he'll do, what he'll say, how he'll handle it. We need to listen. You know, I, I remember one of, the, one of the times where Jesus, well, right after he began his ministry, he came in and he shared what he was there for. He quoted Isaiah 61. He said, I'm here to heal the brokenhearted, to deliver the captives, to, to set, set people free. I'm, I'm here to bring, to be the Messiah, he was saying. And the people went, eh, isn't this Joseph's boy? Isn't this just Joseph's son? Isn't this the carpenter? Who's he? Who is he? They didn't have ears to hear. Jesus, man, he rebuked them. He ripped them. He came in and, 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 and just put them in their place. But they didn't have ears to hear. And he says that several times throughout the scriptures noted where Jesus said, if you have ears to hear, let, you, let them hear. Those who have ears ear, to hear, let them hear. You know, sometimes we don't, we don't like to hear what God says. Because it might be different than what we what we hear. So how do we get a, a hearing ear? Just a little side note, a hearing ear, our ears are opened by our heart being yielded. Kind of like that, that young child sometimes, you know what opens their ears? That's what I found anyway with my kids. Sometimes they couldn't hear, couldn't hear, and all of a sudden, 
Oh, that's what you were saying. Oh, you were speaking. Okay, yeah. Anyway, there was a lot of instruction along with that, but uh, sometimes it, 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 it kind of opened their ears. Oh, now you hear me say no. But see, where God's concerned, sometimes we don't want to hear, but we can always go and, and, and prepare our heart. Note, I love the first two words of this chapter. It says, I will. I love to read the, the Psalms that say, I will. David says that a lot in the Psalms. He'll, he'll say, I will. I'm going to yield. I'm going to change. I will. So we've got to have a, willing, a willingness to meet God, a willingness to look expectantly, a willingness to have ears to hear and listen. And then it says to write it down. Notice what he says here. In, uh, then the Lord said to me, verse, uh, verse 2, Write my answer, my vision, or my answer, plainly on tablets, so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. You know, I like the way this New Living Translation says this because it says, in the King James, it says, write the vision and make it plain on tablets so that they can run. Here it just says, write the answer plain. But you know what happens when you write the answer plain? A vision comes. So both are right, neither's wrong, but it explains it in a way that, when, what is the value of writing it? See, when we set ourselves in a, in a mindset that I'm going to hear God, you ought to carry a notepad around. Or you ought to be ready to write. I've got stuff scratched on envelopes and, and backs of my cattle books and my pickup. I mean, some of it's really messed up because I'm trying to write it while I'm driving across the pasture or down a dirt road or, or something on the console of my pickup. There's times when, when God's speaking and, it's, and it seems fast. But here's what I've always found. If I write it, what is it? It, 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 it helps me remember it more. But it also gives me the ability to reference back to it. So many times, and I love doing this, I write in a prayer journal. I don't do it every day. I don't do it, I don't do it all the time. But at certain key times in my life, I've always written what God's saying, what I feel like He's directing us to do. Or I'll write down the questions that I'm saying, okay, God, man, I don't know about this. What, what do I do here? What do I need to do here? And as I begin to write down my, my, my back and forth with God, it's often that, that maybe sometimes it doesn't come for years later or months later. And if I'm not careful, I'll forget about it. It'll happen, and I won't give God credit if I don't remember, only because I don't remember it. Or I may give Him general credit because I, I give God credit for any good thing that get, happens in my life. But I love it when I look back to that Word and I realize, hey, wait a minute, I did hear God. He was speaking. This did happen. Several key times in, in my life where I've written those things down. Also, though, it gives me the ability to communicate it to somebody else. Maybe where my wife and I, we would, we would be in prayer, sometimes over different direction for our life or something that we're, we're to do, and, and we, we, uh, we have never missed it when we were in agreement. If she let me decide sometimes, or I let her decide sometimes, sometimes we were fixing a problem later on. But if we were unified, if we allowed God to speak to us, we were always right. And as, as we write it down, then we can compare, too. That's pretty cool. We compare what, what God was saying, what we felt. We write it down. Keep a journal. You know, here's one thing I would do if you want to seek God and, and you're trying to get direction in some specific areas, maybe especially... I'd keep a notebook by your bed. I'd get you some little way where you could turn on a light, a little bit of light to where you could, where you could, where you could see it good enough to write. Because it's amazing what God will speak when we wake awake in the night, or when we wake first thing in the morning when our mind is clear. It's amazing what God will say sometimes. And you know, He may just say, "Hey, uh, go to the Book of Psalms," or "Go to, go to," you know, remind you of a scripture. It may be just a piece. It may not be a, oh, the heavens open and it's, you know, it's a big word. And it may just be a little bit of a, a, and here's the thing. He's looking for obedience. If he says, hey, go to Romans chapter 5. Go to, you know, Luke chapter 12. And you go, oh. It's like, eh, okay. <laughs> but what if we go to Luke chapter 5 
In Luke chapter 5, you begin to read, and all of a sudden, then you, then you check a little cross-reference, and all of a sudden, you're over here in Ezekiel chapter 55, or all of a sudden, then you're over here, to say, and then all of a sudden, so, and, and it's like, oh, wow, I see what, I see what you're saying. I, I put this all together. Maybe you just were blessed in some great time in the Word. But here's the thing. We're learning to be obedient. Write it down. Because writing it down, again, paints a picture. If I can take the answer, write it plainly on tablets, the, a vision comes from that. And the fifth thing is this, and I'll close with this, is, is we've got to wait patiently for it. Notice what he says here in verse, uh, uh, the rest of that verse, uh, verse 3, I guess. The vision is for a future time. It describes the end, and it will be fulfilled. So this is, this is where it's specific to Israel, okay? But then... We can fit this back to us in this, in this part here. It says, if it seems slow in coming, wait patiently for it, for, sh <clears throat> for it will surely take place, and it will not delay. See, if God speaks it, and this is where this applies to us in, in this time, is if, if God speaks it, it's going to come. It may not come as quickly as we want, but it'll come. So be patient. Let Him bring it. And then... Uh, Look at the bottom half of verse 4. Look at the proud. They trust in themselves and their lives are crooked. That's them, not us. But here's where we are, verse, the bottom side of, of verse 4. But the righteous will live by their faithfulness to God. Or the King James just says, the just shall live by faith. And you know what? That verse is quoted over in Hebrews chapter 10 as well. And another place. I can't remember where else. But Hebrews chapter 10, verses about, verse about 37. He says, the just shall live by faith. How do we live by faith? We live by faith when we've heard the word of God. And, you know, uh, as, as we close tonight, I just, I just ask you, you know, how, have you ever heard God speak? Well, you know, if you receive Jesus as Lord, you heard God speak. Why? Because the gospel is the word of God. And it speaks and it says, I love you. I died for you. I want you to be my child. I want, you to, I want you to receive this gift of salvation. All of that. And you know, the blessing is that, the blessing of the Word of God is that it, does, it begins with the gospel message of salvation, but it continues in that same way for every other promise. You know, you might be somebody watching, it might be somebody here who's never made Jesus Lord of your life. I assume that all of you have. I know most of you pretty well. I would say you're all saved, but I never want to assume. But our confidence is, is this, that the Bible is very true. And if we hear the word that says, if we call on the name of the Lord, we shall be saved, then that's what we got to do. If it says that if we'll confess Jesus as Lord, that we can receive that gift of salvation. And so we're going to close with prayer. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give those that are online or those that, that, that are here an opportunity to pray and to receive Christ. But also I want you to think about a word for you. Maybe you've got a word or, or need a word for, for your situation in your life. Maybe you're dealing with fear. and Maybe you're, maybe you're dealing with you know, financial issues. Maybe, maybe it's, it's, it's any type of thing. You know, God has answers for that. God has your answer. So let's pray. Let's seek Him for those. Father, we just come before You. and Lord, we just thank You that You're good to us, that You love us. That, and Father, we thank You that, first of all, that Word that we all have to have in order to receive heaven. It's not based on our works. It's based on the gift of salvation that Jesus bought and paid for. That first Word that we ought to hear from God, that we hear from God, is first of all, I love You and I died for You. Receive me as Lord. God is calling out. He, he stands at the door of our hearts and he, and he knocks until we let Him come in. If you've never let Jesus come into your heart, into your life, and you need to make Jesus Lord of your life, the Bible says that we can confess Jesus as Lord. We can repent of our sin. We can say, Lord, I'm sorry I'm a sinner. I need your salvation. I'm not good enough on my own self. But Lord, if you'll receive me, you can be that simple to say, Lord, receive me. I'll, be, uh, I'll make you Lord of my life. The Bible says, if you confess Jesus as Lord, you say, Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. And Jesus, come into my heart, my life. Be my Lord. 
and my Savior. Praying that prayer puts you in a position of, of sonship or as, do, as a daughter of God. Salvation is yours with that, with that heartfelt prayer to receive Christ. You may be in this place and you say, Lord, I need a word from you. And I believe that if we'll choose to seek him, he'll give that word. Father, I pray over everybody here that, Lord God, that you give them the direction for their lives. Those that are seeking you about major decisions in their life, maybe simple decisions in their life, that, Father, you're there for them. I thank you, Lord God, for guiding and directing each one of us that when we receive that word, we'll, we'll hold fast to it. We'll walk patiently in it. We'll not turn it loose. And our faith in that word will maintain our stance with you and enable us to get to the, the end result, holding us fast by that word. We praise you. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I tell you what, uh, I just uh, am thankful for you being here tonight. I'm just glad that uh, you're with us. We have uh, several things coming up. We have a October 1st uh, will be another play day event. That's a ways off, but I want to let you know about that. We've got some friends here from the Lucene Cowboy Church. Cross brand? No. Branded. Branded Cowboy Church. Uh, they're glad that they're here. They meet over on Lucene on Sunday morning. So if you're all the way over there, way over there by Covington, uh, you you can attend there. And they're doing some play days and some different different arena events as well. We're probably going to partner together on some things. Uh, so excited about that. But you guys have a blessed evening. And uh, <clears throat> we are going to tear down. Uh, we'll have to bring everything out of here. So we're just going to close right there. We're going to close with a word of prayer, though, because Kevin's going to close us out. And so uh, let's bow our heads one more time and go out of here in faith. Lord, thank you for all you do for us. Thank you so much for the rain. Yes. Um, you just, here it is August, and you give us almost two inches of rain. You just amaze, amaze me all the time. Thank you so much. Be with everyone as they go home. Uh, they get home safely. and. Uh, have everyone uh, remember the word they heard and yes, and uh, use it throughout their week. Amen. Amen. Well, you guys have a blessed week.